For a driver who really hasn't done that much, Mick Schumacher has a huge number of supporters around the sport. The goodwill his father's name has earned him in the last two years is incredible, and seeing him stuck in a Haas car that could have been lapped by an Arctic lorry in 2021 was sympathetically endearing. After two seasons though, Mick's Formula 1 career is on a knife edge. One side is a seat at Haas in 2023. On the other side is his career ending after only two years. Or is it? Is there another option for Mick? We definitely think so, and in eight minutes' time, we think you'll agree with us. The battle for the final Formula 1 seat on the 2023 grid appears to be a straight fight between Mick Schumacher and Nico Hülkenberg, with Haas hoping to make a decision before the end of the season. All nine other teams, providing Logan Sargent gets enough super license points to join Williams, have finalized their driver lineups for next year. And so, all eyes are on Haas, with Schumacher no longer the certainty he once seemed to seal another chance alongside Kevin Magnussen. Schumacher, the son of F1 legend Michael, has been steady but not spectacular since making his much-anticipated debut in F1 in 2021, and has also attracted criticism from his team for his numerous crashes. One of the major pulls for the German, meanwhile, was that he was a Ferrari junior, but the 23-year-old is losing his ties to Ferrari, as his engine providers and major partners, at the end of this year. With the Ferrari ties gone, Haas had just left with an incredibly expensive driver. I'm not talking about his salary, that is pennies compared to his other costs. What I'm talking about is the amount he costs the team in car parts. F1 cars are expensive, and when you're limited on how much money you can spend on them, having a driver cost you almost $5 million a year in repairs is painful. And to give that some perspective, Latifi cost the second most in repairs this year at $3.3 million. Mick's teammate Magnussen has cost just $375,000. To give you some perspective on that $5 million repair bill, Toto Wolf recently said that Mercedes spends $3.5 million a year on car parts. That's the cost of building upgrades and spares for both cars all year. Mick has cost more than that. Schumacher is still regarded as the favorite for the seat, but with Magnussen both outscoring and outqualifying him, Haas boss Gunther Steiner recently admitted it was 50-50 whether he would remain with the team or not. For me, it's no longer about one race, one lap, Steiner told RTL. For me, it's about what's best for the Haas team in the medium to long term. It's about who leads the team stably into the future. This has been a big part of the talk coming out of Haas. They're very seriously thinking about the long term at the moment, and having drivers who can help guide the car's development is an incredibly important part of that. Steiner also reportedly told the German outlet that it was between only Schumacher and Nico Hülkenberg. Hülkenberg, at 35, is a well-known name in F1 and a well-respected driver with 181 race starts to his name. He was generally seen as unlucky to lose his Renault seat back in 2020, and since then he's stuck around in F1 as a reserve driver for Racing Point and then Aston Martin, deputising in five races over the last three years. Steiner, while looking for the medium to long term, has also made it clear he wants his next driver to be a leader. Mick has got some experience. Obviously, it's his second year in Formula 1, he said. But is that enough to take the team forward? We need leadership from this position, and these are all the things I evaluate. That's the most important thing. How can we take the team forward? We can't know how those discussions are going or what Gunther Steiner or Gene Haas are thinking but we can speculate at what Mick's career prospects might look like. As we said earlier, on the one side of the knife, he gets to keep his Haas seat for next year and gets another chance at proving himself. But on the other side is where things get interesting. Let's say Mick loses his seat to Nico Hülkenberg next year. Then what? Retire to IndyCar? Race in the World Rally Championship? Maybe a professional endurance racer? We don't think so. Losing his seat next year might actually be the best way forward for his Formula 1 career. Will be up front, Haas might have already announced Nico Hülkenberg as their second driver for next year when you watch this. The fact that Aston Martin have signed Stoffel van Dorn as a reserve driver for next year, along with F2 champion Felipe Drugovic already being a reserve, means they're planning on Hülkenberg not being there next season. Sorry Mick, but like we said, this isn't the end of the world. Mick is not as bad a driver as the driver's championship table might suggest. Yes, he has had three incredibly expensive crashes. The one in Saudi Arabia was so bad that Haas decided to not enter him in the race, 
but he is ahead of Yuki Tsunoda, thanks to a higher best finish. He's eight points ahead of the very well thought of Alex Albon, and maybe most importantly, he's doubled Joe Guanyu's points. Why is that important? Well, give me 30 seconds and I'll tell you. The announcement that Alfa Romeo were departing Formula 1 meant that Sauber were free to partner up with German manufacturer Audi, who will join the team in 2026. Alfa Romeo also only has one reserve driver for 2023, Theo Porcher. The 19-year-old Frenchman is still eligible to race in F2 next season, and assuming he does, there will be plenty of races where he can't help out Alfa Romeo, meaning they could use a second reserve. Sounds like the perfect job for Mick Schumacher. He has driven this era of cars, something very few people in the world have done. He's also still a potential talent for the future, despite his shaky start. So, have you worked out why Mick beating Joe Guanyu is important yet? No? Well, Joe is only contracted for next year at Alfa Romeo. That car has been pretty good this year. Sure, it's dropped off heavily in the second half, but Valtteri Bottas is still 10th in the Drivers' Championship. Let's say Joe doesn't have a great second season. That's entirely possible. There is a reason you haven't heard much about Joe all year. He's been pretty forgettable. So Joe goes at the end of 2023. Alfa Romeo, who at that point are just called Sauber, start thinking a little further down the road to when Audi comes in. A German team would be interested in a German driver. It would certainly help interest in the sport in Germany. Just because Audi are joining in 2026 doesn't mean they can't influence decisions made in the team before then. By leaving Haas, Mick might actually have the best chance of advancing his career. Mick has already spoken about the potential of an Audi link-up in the future. Asked about the rumors, Schumacher said, Plan A, that's Haas, is the only plan that counts for me at the moment, and that I want to and will pursue. Of course, it's nice to hear that such a large group is also looking for a German driver, but all that is still a long way off. The 23-year-old welcomed the news that Audi won't just be an engine manufacturer, but that the link-up with Sauber will see them compete as the Audi factory team. I think it's great that Audi is getting into Formula 1, said Schumacher. It is a global company, a German brand. I hope this will bring many Germans back to Formula 1 and that we'll have a home race again at some point. Former F1 driver turned Sky Deutschland pundit Timo Glock reckons Audi would be a good option for Schumacher. He is, however, concerned about the time gap between today and 2026. Audi could be a realistic chance for Mick, said the former Toyota driver. There are still a few years to go before Audi is really there, and that of course can be an issue. It would be a dream if a German driver like Mick were to start with a German manufacturer. We agree with Glock. If Mick can't find a seat before 2026, then the odds of Audi taking him on are pretty slim. But if he can find a seat, especially if that seat is on the team that Audi are taking over, then the manufacturer sounds like they would be keen to have him on the team. Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dice said, We will try to employ German drivers. It helps in the home country. And I also know of plans that we will have a Grand Prix in Germany again, which should also revive Formula 1 in Germany once again. So Mick, it might all seem like doom and gloom at the moment, but this doesn't have to be the end of the line just yet. In fact, has showing you the door could be the best thing to happen in your Formula 1 career so far. Want to know more about what's going on in Formula 1? Then click the link on your screen and I'll see you there.